Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. Uh, if you're new here, I just want to let you guys know that I have another channel, my main channel, that is just called Radix Verum. Um, I'll try to link it on this channel eventually so that it's connected to the main channel, but I do have this one linked on my main channel. But um, if you've been following my work on my other channel, I covered FTX. Um, on this channel, I talked about Tether, and uh, I've talked about these YouTube personal finance um, scammers who I believe are under SEC investigation and will potentially face lawsuits for the crypto scams like FTX that they have promoted, among other things. And uh, I've talked about central bank digital currencies. And the latest thing I want to talk about is BlockFi, because I did predict that BlockFi would collapse. I think I also said Crypto.com will probably be one of them, another one that collapses. And I maybe talked about a couple other things. So um, I want to get into BlockFi. They just announced a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And this, of course, is unsurprising. So interestingly, they deleted their team page. So, you know, uh, this um, person, Carl Menger on Twitter says, remember, not your keys, not your coins. I would suggest that that is correct. So let's just kind of name some names here. Zach Prince, Flory Marquez, Amit Chila, Meg Crowell, Alex Gregorian, Adam Healy, Rob Loban, Jonathan Mayers, Yuri Mushkin, David Spack, Andrew Tam, and Shannon Ullman. Shannon being a man and not a woman. So let's go ahead and talk about BlockFi. Um, Genevieve Roach Dector says, BlockFi just filed for bankruptcy. Here is what I know. On November 10th, BlockFi announced it was halting withdrawals in the wake of the FTX liquidity crisis, which turned into a collapse by the next day. Why was BlockFi so affected by FTX's collapse? Let's back up. BlockFi was actually in trouble first, thanks to the Three Arrows capital collapse earlier this year. BlockFi experienced about $80 million in losses. FTX then swooped in to rescue BlockFi in July and save it from bankruptcy. The deal had two parts a $400 million line of credit and an option for FTX to buy BlockFi for up to $240 million. And she cites Zach Prince here saying yesterday, we signed definitive agreements subject to shareholder approval with FTX US for the revolving line of credit and then to acquire BlockFi at a variable price of up to $240 million based on performance triggers. She goes on to say, however, the deal was not worth $240 million at the time. That was just the highest it could possibly be if FTX exercised its option. CNBC reported the deal was worth closer to $25 million at the time. This rescue of BlockFi is actually what helped Sam Bankman-Fried become known as the quote-unquote JP Morgan of crypto by the mainstream media. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not... <laughs> It's not like they weren't promoting this guy endlessly. You were called the JP Morgan of crypto, said David Rubenstein to FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed. The crypto billionaire responded by saying the main goal was to backstop companies and help bail out the industry rather than maximize on deals. But this was all lies, just like his effective altruism was a cover for a money laundering and political operation. Well, let me ask you this. When the Bitcoin world was kind of going down a bit, yep. I think a Bitcoin peaked at 61,000 or something, and now it's yep. at 23,000, but it went yep. as low as 17, 18,000. 17, 18. When it did, um, a lot of other uh, cryptocurrencies went down as well. Yep. Um, you bailed out some companies. Yeah. Uh, what money did you use to do that? So 
there, there were... Listen to this absolute freak's voice, okay? I know you guys are gonna say, oh, that's rude to, to make fun of somebody's appearance or the way that they talk or something, but I would pause it. I would suggest to you that you can tell a lot about a person by the way that they talk. Like Elizabeth Holmes, how Elizabeth Holmes tried to lower the tone of her voice as she was attempting to mimic Steve Jobs. This man is giving a lot away about his character with that bizarre, rat-like, high-pitched voice. Just saying. A few different versions of it. And, um, you know, one piece of this was basically FTX balance sheet. Like, we keep our corporate cash just in, in dollars. And so, you know, we'd raised a few billion dollars over the course of the last uh, last couple of years, and we're a profitable business. Um, now, we, we'd also done some acquisitions, which partially balances that out. But, you know, we had some some cash left. And with the uh, BlockFi, you know, deal, for instance, um, that was on uh, FTX. I think FTX US's balance sheet. Like, I'm sorry, how does anyone take this young man seriously and give him and entrust him with millions of dollars, billions of dollars when he talks like that? <laughs> well, Wall Street's had its problems early in the 20th century. Um, J Mr. J.P. Morgan himself oh, you know, used God. to go and say, I'm going to bail out certain companies. And you were called the J.P. Morgan yep. of crypto. Yep. Did that bother you or did not? It doesn't bother me too much. I mean, I think it's something I, I thought was the right thing for the industry. And, you know, our very explicit mandate that we sort of gave to... This to, mandate to that we sort of gave you... He just talks right out of his behind. Uh, it's st quite stunning. I actually admire the perspicacity of that. BlockFi thought it was being rescued, but it just hitched itself to a different shaky creditor. When the deal happened in July, many believed FTX was in a strong liquidity position. <laughs> Turns out that wasn't the case. Oh, shocking. BlockFi's line of credit is gone and its acquirer is gone as well. We'll have to wait for more details to see BlockFi's complete liquidity situation, but it's obviously not good after huge losses from Three Arrows, Luna, and now the FTX collapse and its bankruptcy filing today. BlockFi noted that it has more than 100,000 creditors in between between one to ten billion dollars in liabilities, and it has maybe two hundred and fifty-six point nine million in cash on hand. Yeah, BlockFi still owes FTX two hundred and seventy-five million. <laughs> The SEC is also listed as one of BlockFi's top creditors. You can't make this up, folks, okay? You can't. BlockFi was fined $100 million by the SEC in February for failing to properly register its crypto lending product. So I would suggest that you guys follow her. She has a substack called Grit Capital, um, and she always does... Uh, fantastic work. So I highly recommend uh, Miss Genevieve to follow. But here we have um, the Reuters article, Crypto Lender Block Buy Files for Bankruptcy in New Jersey. Uh, you know, filing follows weeks after the FTX collapse. FTX is listed as BlockFi's number two creditor, Bitcoin down over 70% from its peak in 2021. Major cryptocurrency lender BlockFi has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection along with eight affiliates. It said on Monday, the latest crypto casualty to follow the spectacular collapse of the FTX exchange earlier this month. The filing in a New Jersey court comes as crypto prices plummet with Bitcoin down more than 70 percent from a 2021 peak. New Jersey-based BlockFi had links with FTX, which filed for protection in the U.S. earlier in November after traders pulled $6 billion from the platform form in three days and rival exchange Binance abandoned a rescue deal. In a court filing Monday, BlockFi listed FTX as its second largest creditor with $275 million owed on a loan extended earlier this year. 
Under a deal signed with FTX in July, BlockFi was to receive that revolving line of credit. BlockFi's bankruptcy filing also comes after two of BlockFi's largest competitors, Celsius and Voyager Digital, filed for bankruptcy in July, citing extreme market conditions that have resulted in losses of both companies. So I would suggest at this moment, you go to my main channel, Radix Verum, and you watch a video that I did about personal finance YouTubers. There were several of them that I called out. Uh, uh, Graham Stephen, um, Meet Kevin. Uh, There's a couple other ones. I don't remember off the top of my head. There was like five of them. They were all pushing Voyager Digital. They all pushed FTX. They pushed BlockFi and all of these crypto products that they knew were incredibly high risk. Um, and that they knew they were scams. They knew they were scamming their audiences. And I hope, I hope they are being investigated and I hope they can be sued for what they've done and the lack of remorse that they seem to have. They just go from one scam to another. And I really recommend that you guys follow CoffeeZilla. He has done a very good job calling these people out in the past, calling out all of these scammers and grifters. So continuing, but I, rem I never forget them pushing Voyager Digital and causing people to lose tons of money, like their life savings, because people look at these YouTubers as being more trustworthy and authentic. They don't understand that they're being lied to and they're being put, you know, in jeopardy of losing everything. They see these people as genuine and authentic because of the way that these people market uh, their content and how they try to appear transparent. They'll always use words like, oh, we're, you know, we really care about transparency. You don't. Crypto lenders, the de facto banks of the crypto world, boomed during the pandemic, attracting retail customers with double-digit rates in return for their crypto deposits. On the flip side, institutional investors such as hedge funds looking to make leveraged bets paid higher rates to borrow the funds from these lenders who then profited from the difference. Crypto lenders are not required to hold any capital or liquidity buffers like traditional lenders, and some found themselves exposed when a, sor a shortage of collateral forced them and their customers to shoulder large losses. Um, BlockFi's largest creditor, Anchor a Trust, a company that represents creditors and stressed out situations, is owed $729 million. Valar Ventures, a Peter Thiel-linked venture capital fund, owns 19% of BlockFi equity shares. So Peter Thiel is maybe going to face some losses from these scams. BlockFi also listed the U.S. SEC as one of its largest creditors with a 30 million claim in February. A subsidiary of BlockFi agreed to pay 100 million to the SEC and 32 states to settle charges in connection with a retail crypto lending product the company offered to nearly 600,000 investors. In a blog post, BlockFi said its Chapter 11 cases will enable the company to stabilize its business and maximize value for all stakeholders. Quote, acting in the best interest of our clients is our top priority and continues to guide our path forward, BlockFi said. They had earlier paused withdrawals from the platform and acknowledged it had significant exposure to FTX and its associated entities. Quote, obligations owed to us by Alameda, assets held at FTX.com and untrawn amounts from our credit line with FTX.com. US. So what's interesting is Tether is also tied into Alameda. They're all connected, guys. And it's bankruptcy filing. BlockFi said it had hired Kirkland and Ellis. Oh, yeah, that's a Bill Barr law firm. And Haynes and Boone as bankruptcy counsel and Berkeley Research Group as a financial advisor. At the end of June, a third of BlockFi's $1.8 billion outstanding loans were unsecured, according to the company. Now, I have their bankruptcy filing here. Voluntary petition for non-individuals filing for bankruptcy. So you can see here, I'll include the link to this um, in the video description. So you can go ahead and go through all of this on your own. Go ahead and take a look at it. 
Um, it is quite interesting. Pending bankruptcy cases filed by the debtor and affiliates of the debtor. So you can see BlockFi and these are all their affiliate uh, ventures here. Trading, lending, wallet ventures, international investment product services, lending to LLC. And so um, it's very, very interesting to go through there and just kind of look at all of the financials. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Um, very interesting. This is also, I think, kind of funny. Um, Fidelity has now officially opened retail Bitcoin and crypto trading accounts. Fidelity Investments. Certain users have received emails detailing their new access to purchase and sell Bitcoin on the Fidelity platform. So that is from Bitcoin Magazine. You can read about that. Very, very interesting, right? Hmm. And then just to close out, the Bahamas attacks FTX's new CEO and says it is not to blame for the exchange's collapse. Pinder vowed that any companies or individuals that have broken Bahamian law will be held accountable and said the demise of FTX shows the need for, quote, strong cross-border cooperation. Right. Uh, FTX is facing an active and ongoing investigation in the Bahamas that includes criminal authorities. The country's attorney general has confirmed. Ryan Pinder stressed that the Bahamas is a place of laws and sought to defend regulators for how they've handled the exchange's implosion. He also emphasized that while FTX consisted of more than 100 companies in dozens of jurisdictions worldwide, yeah, it was this big um, <laughs> game of the shell network of shell companies, right? FTX Digital Markets was the only entity registered in the Bahamas, adding, quote, what happened can be more readily understood as a case of a very large business failure as a result of questionable internal management practices and corporate governance, unquote. Pinder argues that the Bahamian Securities Commission, quote, deserves the highest praise for moving so quickly and decisively to suspend FTX. FTX Digital Markets license and approval uh, provisional liquidators after market confidence was lost in the company. Quote, the commission was the first regulator in the world to take significant steps with respect to the FTX group of companies, which has operations and regulated activities throughout the world. This was done for the purpose of protecting the interest of FTX customers and creditors, as well as the integrity of the Bahamian financial services industry. He said the strength of the country's legislative framework allowed swift action to be taken and went on to claim that no other jurisdiction in the world moved or could have moved this quickly in circumstances such as these. He went on to urge governments around the world to exercise restraint in their public commentary surrounding the proceedings against FTX and claimed last week new CEO John Ray had made inaccurate allegations in Chapter 11 filings last week describing it as extremely regrettable. Pinder vowed that any companies or individuals that have broken Bahamian law will be held accountable and said the demise of FTX shows a need for strong cross-border cooperation. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So anyways, to wrap this up, BlockFi has now filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings, and it seems to be that the contagion continues to spread. Anyways, I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on crypto in general, on BlockFi, on FTX and Tether, and uh, the personal finance YouTubers who continue to push scam after scam after scam.